Hey guys, you may recall I picked up a free Admiral, I think it's a 12X12 Bakelite tabletop TV at the early television fall swap meet. And I tried to test the picture tube and I got really bad readings. It showed a short, like a heater cathode short, and we had no filament glow. But before writing this off as being a, a lost cause, Let's take a closer look at it. So if there's no filament, it's game over. We have to have a glowing filament to have any hope of using this. When I checked it with a multimeter, it showed open. But we can try a few things. One, the way these pins work is they are hollow. And there are thin wires that come up from inside the CRT and pass through these and they're soldered at the end. Well, we could have a cold solder joint or it could be corroded inside. So we, that's the first thing we want to do. Before that, uh, I want to just verify again that we have no filament continuity. And yeah, we do not. So, fire soldering iron and let's reflow the solder on those pins. We can also clean this up a bit and do a visual inspection. Now, I've warned many times over the years about using a pitcher tube rejuvenator. It wouldn't surprise me if that's what happened to this. If you're too aggressive with them, they blow the filament open and the, the ends can weld themselves to other elements inside the gun. It's pretty darn unusual for a pitcher tube filament to just burn out on its own. They're, they're pretty robust, or far more robust than your typical little miniature tube. Inside, it looks fine. It looks really clean. It's not that discolored, so it seems, well, a little bit discolored, but not too horrible. Now I can actually Trying to see where the filament leads are coming in. I'll try to zoom in for you guys. Even more. So I'm looking inside here, and there are two little wires coming down, going to the filament, which goes right down the middle. And I don't see an obvious problem. So I can see the thicker leads coming down and going to these pins, and then two much smaller wires come off and go down into the filament. Alright. Also looking at the end of this. This is not a well. Mm, no, it's not an obvious cold solder joint, but that doesn't really mean anything. Let's just Get the iron out, and I'm going to heat up the side of the pin and feed solder into it. Filament pins are invariably with one on either side of the key plastic there. So we want to apply heat to the side of this and feed solder into the end of it. We need to apply a little bit to the side of the iron just to kind of wet it and get things going. Doesn't take much. For a more extreme uh, thing, I do have a crimping tool made specifically for doing this. Like out in the field, we don't have a soldering iron where it kind of crushes that metal tube with the hope that it would pinch the wire inside of it. Or you could remove the base. There's only five pins, it's not too hard to unsolder that and crack the seal here and pull it off. We will do all of those. To get to the bottom of what's going on here. And nope, that did not do the trick. I had a feeling it wouldn't. Alright. This is the crimping tool. Rather unassuming. I was lucky to spy this on eBay because what seller would know what this is? All it has is the patent number on it, and that is it. There's a little hole at the end. You put that over your two pin and you pull down this lever and there's a thin metal blade in there that's going to put a crease in the side of that metal collar. However, because I have too much solder globbed onto it now, 
it won't fit so get out a little bit of desoldering braid and clean up my sloppy soldering so why would this work with a soldering didn't well perhaps the end of the wire is corroded and it's not picking up the solder very well it seems like a stretch because it's not like this thing was out in the <laughs> exposed to extreme conditions it's not all rusty or anything so it seems a little unlikely but anyways we'll give it a try because well, what else and what have we got to lose so oh i see actually you start with like this and then you, you close it up i've never actually used this before but i've seen crts that have had this applied to them so it leaves a very distinctive mark on the pin. Let's try doing this one. Alright. Alright, so we can take it a step further and we can bust off this base and get to the actual wire. Okay, there is one other possibility. The wire could have broken inside here. That would be far more likely if this, well, if this base was looser. It's a little bit loose, which will make it easy to get this off. But if it was really loose and it had gotten twisted, it could have, there could be metal fatigue. I have encountered one CRT where the wire coming off broke off right at the glass. And I was able to get expose enough metal on the little stub and solder lead to it and resurrect it uh, however it's not <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart and it's not guaranteed to work so now I'm going to get some desoldering braid and put it right on the ends and get out try to get out all the solder so the base should just lift right off because the glue seal is already broken on it well this base is being a little extra stubborn I have all the leads loose but it doesn't want to come off, so I'm just starting to chip away at it. These bases are quite brittle. There must be one pin it's still hung up on. Breaking it apart. All right, there's one lead. There's two. And there's the last one. So one final thing we can do. So none of the leads are broken off. But they uh, can oxidize. You know, so these are a little blackened. It's basically bare copper. So a little bit of sandpaper. Let's get them nice and bright and shiny. And then do one final continuity check. I don't know if it's still bad at this point, uh, we're done. Short of rebuilding it. And yeah, we are done. We are done. So what are we going to do next? We're going to break it open safely. So I'm going to nip the seal here and let the air back in 
and we're going to break open the neck and examine this more closely and see if we can figure out where exactly things went wrong. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're simply going to crush the end. Wear protection when you do this. This is the thinnest part of the glass. It's not going to implode when I do this. Parts of the neck might crack and fracture, but it's not going to implode. This is the safest way to decommission one of these. So here we go. Piece of cake. Just have two little bits of glass. Notice the gutter has now gone completely white as we let the air in. Now to get at that gun, we're going to need to break the neck. That's going to get a little bit messy, so I'm not going to do that upright here on the workbench like this because then when I <laughs> break this glass will go. I'm gonna lay it on its side and I guess I will do it on the workbench but I'll put a towel down. Alright, we're gonna do this very scientifically. And there we go. So, anatomy of a CRT. A little hard to see well, impossible to see the cathode that's going down through that bottommost piece there on the right. Anatomy of an electron gun. On the far right here, the outermost bit is the grid. Inside that we have the cathode sleeve. Inside of that is the filament. Then we have A1 and A2, which help focus and accelerate the electron beam going out that way through that little hole. So where's the break? Can you guys even see that? That there are two itty bitty fine wires so I'll try to use the So down in the middle there there's two thick leads they look like they terminate just kind of floating in space, but there's actually two really fine hair-like wires coming off of those. They go down into the heater. So I'm going to cut off these heavier leads and get this whole base out of the way. And then it's all held together. The, the stages by these glass rods break those apart and see if I can get just the cathode assembly. Start by cutting this base off. Ooh, I'm a little nervous about doing that though, because those really fine wires, if I cut off these, the supporting structure, there's going to be some heavy wires attached to very thin wires and probably going to tear them apart, so I'm going to sever them first. And what's left out of the cathode still connected. Now you can really see down in there. So, that coil down the middle, that is our filament. That is what has failed. I'm not sure if we can just pull that out. Find out. And so, 
uh, sort of a double helix kind of thing. It looks like DNA. There must be a break in this somewhere. Yeah. I hope you... Maybe that's better. A little bit of a back black round. So yeah, there's two halves of the filament broken in half. So we never had a chance at resurrecting this picture tube. So, oh well. <laughs> I mean, it did say it was bad when I picked the set up, and it was free, so not out anything. I will dispose of all of this safely, and uh, I will combine the best bits of both uh, partial sets that I have now and make one good set. But for now, well, that's going to be it. Hope you found this interesting.